Hi, this is PT at Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.com, and this is part five, I believe, of our little uh, catch-up series, uh, number 243, I believe. So let's go ahead and open up our game. And the scene I want to be working on now, uh, the next scene, will be the character customization. And in the last one, we went ahead and put a cube in there. I'm actually going to go ahead and change the size of this cube. Uh, if you go ahead and actually look at the... Uh, online demo I have. Uh, you'll notice that in this scene here I've actually set it up so that um, there's some sort of like uh, architecture kind of in the background. It's uh, Your character can't move around in it but it, it just kind of adds a bit of feeling to it. Uh, I'm not going to go that far into this because this is just a demo to show you how to set it up and uh, that's pretty much it. So this is the angle I'm going to be looking at. Switch over to the scene. Uh, I am going to add a light though. Just to make things look a little bit better. Uh, I'm just going to move the light out of the way. And let's add a bit of angle to it. Uh, that's good enough. We could add color and everything else. But like I said, it's just for demonstration purposes. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up. Look at it. I'm going to lower it down just a bit. Uh, we'll put it right about there. I guess it helps if I actually split this so I can see both. Uh, right about there is good. All right. So let's go ahead and actually start working on our character prefab, uh, the, the actual like, real character prefab. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this split for now. I'm going to come into uh, the Fro game assets here. Uh, we'll open up character. Uh, muscular character. Let me just expand this a bit. I'll make sure this is done with an animation. All right. I'm just going to take that, drag it onto my scene, and we'll drop it right about here. Uh, let me just reset everything here. I will have to move it up. Or oh, it looks like down, I should say. And I am going to rotate it 180 degrees on the Y, just so it's facing my camera. And I want to move them forward a bit just so I can actually see them a little bit better. And I guess I should move my cube forward a little bit more as well so I can see my character just a little bit better. I want just the edge of the cube there. I guess I really shouldn't be so picky about it since this isn't for use and it's just for demonstration. Uh, but anyway, right there is good enough. He's at the edge. But he's close enough that we can actually see, and of course, if I actually spread this out a bit, we can actually see him fairly well. If we start it up, nothing happens. Well, he'll play his automatic animation, but we'll be fixing that in a bit. All right, so I'm going to rename him to Muscular. i just shorten the name. I'll shrink this down. And you can name it whatever you want. Later on, when we're going through a couple of the scripts, uh, there's one in particular where you're going to want to actually change the name uh, to the name of the actual uh, prefab that you're creating. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually go into the component menu. We'll start off at the hack and slash tutorial. Come down to player and we'll add all scripts. Now right away I already know that later on I would like to add some sort of uh, functionality to actually turn components on and off. For instance uh, we have a movement script attached to this character, which I believe is called player input right here. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to turn that off when we want to be able to use the keyboard without the character moving and then turn it back on. I do not have that functionality in yet. It's easy functionality to add, but in this series, I don't actually want to add any code uh, just for the people that have actually been uh, keeping up and typing up the whole thing all on their own. Uh, if they don't really want to watch this because there's nothing to benefit them, then they don't have to. Unless, of course, they just want to go ahead and watch it and get a refresher on how to set the, the scenes up. So, of course, now we got it all set up. Well, we got everything attached to what needs to be attached. If we start it up, you just fall through. So, we're going to change a few things here. Okay, one of the first things you might notice is that we have a couple errors down here. And one is uh, about an animation state not being found. And another is the input button toggle inventory is not set up to change this and it tells you to go over to the input manager. Uh, okay, as far as these inputs, 
Uh, these are actually covered in an earlier tutorial, so I'm not going to do them now because I can just tell you the tutorial that you actually have to go to. And I accidentally opened up MonoDevelop, which is uh, fine. Uh, but the tutorial you'll want to look at is if you've never used the Input Manager, let me go back into Unity. Uh, you can go to File, uh, sorry, it's uh, under Edit, Project Settings, Input. And it's this little thing over here. Now, if you've never used this before, I believe the first instance where I start using this is tutorial 89 and 90. And this is where we're actually setting up the input for our, our camera. And then for the player controller inputs, uh, that starts off at 92. So there's, at 91, I believe we were doing a fix for the targeting system. So basically 89 on up to uh, while well, you're done with the player inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here just to keep the video length short and I'm going to add a few of the ones here just to get rid of the errors. So I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so I've gone ahead and added all the um, buttons that I actually think I need. Uh, if I go ahead and hit play again, uh, it still falls through because we haven't worked with the cloud yet, but I'm not get, getting any errors as far as the, the buttons that need to be uh, added. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is these animations that I need. And if we actually go ahead and just click on our character again, uh, the prefab, uh, these are coming from, I uh, believe it's the advanced movement, yes. Uh, we have quite a few parameters, so let's actually just start going through all these. Uh, the player input doesn't have any parameters into it. The PC script uh, does have mounts, and we'll deal with those in a bit. Uh, the, the initialized part was actually just uh, some debug code. Later on, we'll actually be hiding this value again. Uh, let me see, the advanced movement... Uh, there's quite a few uh, parameters here, and it, whoops! And if you really want to know exactly what these do, uh, go back to the the video where we're actually creating the advanced movement script, and uh, we go through them all. I think they're named pretty descriptively, uh, but anyway, these here are just actually strings to the actual animations we want to use. Now later on, we'll be switching them over to animation clips. It's just when I first did it, uh, strings was the first thing that popped into my mind, and uh, the string names that we're actually referring to are the animation clips up here. Now, I have all of them set to uh, check to see if we actually have anything there for it. And if we don't, uh, to skip it. All of them except for idle. And I did that on purpose because I want to make sure that everyone always has an idle animation. So if you actually don't have any animations for your the character model that you're currently using... Uh, you can comment this out. I'm going to show you the line, but I am going to remove it because, like I said, I don't want to add any code uh, in these series. So you can just check to see if, and we're calling it idle animation name, sorry, idle anim name is equal, equal to, and then just an empty string. I'm sorry if it's not equal to that. So basically, if we do have something in there, I'll play it. So if we go ahead and hit clear, we should get no error. Uh, I'm going to turn off maximize just so we can keep the console up now. He's still going to fall through, but we don't get any errors now. Uh, but like I said, I want to make sure all my guys do have a idle animation just to even start off with. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just go in here, find out what it's called. Um, I'm just going to use the idle one. Uh, and when we dealt with the animations before, we actually looked uh, at ways to uh, copy them. And I believe we actually looked um, at ways to change them a bit. I'm not 100% sure if we got that far into it yet. But I know there are still a few animations that I'm not happy well 100% with. So I know I will be tweaking them. Uh, but anyway, it's called idle1. So I'm just going to go in here and type in idle1. And of course, later on when we switch to the animation clip, she'll actually just drag the animation clip from... Uh, your folder and throw it in here. Uh, but if we start it off now, of course, he's just going to fall through. Uh, let's pause it. Go to the scene view. Take a look at him. Uh, he is actually in his idle uh, position. So you'll want to do that with each animation that you have here that you actually can support. And you might even want to add more animations than uh, what I already have listed here. It's completely up to you. So for my walk animation, uh, good thing these are alphabetical. We have several different alt walk animations, so I could just use walk one. And run is my run animation. Uh, but you get the idea. You should be able to fill all these out yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And the next thing I want to work on, 
uh, will be the character controller. Uh, eventually, I would like to have this automatically resize itself like we do with our our uh, mob, mob uh, scripts. Uh, so for all of our mobs, the everything's automatically resized to fit the care to fit the mob, and just you know everything just works. Uh, we haven't actually added that functionality yet for our character, but let's go ahead and take a look at them. And I want to move the character controller up. So let's go with the center on the Y, and I'm just going to move this up. Uh, you'll want it uh, right about there is good. I uh, could make it a little bit higher because of his head. I'm not too worried if he doesn't if he sticks out a little bit. Uh, but I do want to change the radius a bit. I want to bring that in a bit. I mostly want to cover his body, and if you look at it when he's just standing there, if we come back, uh, you can make it a little bit wider, I guess. Uh, but fix it to according to what you want. Uh, let me go back to the game view. There we go. We now have movement. Whoops, I just ran off the cliff. Okay, so uh, really the only thing left to do at this point is to save it. So I'm going to come down to my resources folder. And let me see, we have the character, model, uh, prefab, human, male, <laughs> uh, muscular, right here. So I'm just going to take that, drag it right here. And we'll just get rid of them. And that's it for this tutorial. We've got the guy set up. So next we're going to move on to the actual scripts that we need for the scene. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.